We are here on the deck with Harpia at Krimsk. Uh, number 15 is down at Guadada. Harpia is being represented by Derby, Mazzucato, Trigger, and Smokey. So two 18s, a 16, and a 14 coming for Harpia. Love their, their liveries. Flipping over to number 15 down at Guadada. We have Xbox in an F-16, Skinner in a 16, Beaver in another 16, and Gunny in the fourth and final 16. Looks like they are taking triple tanks, all 120s. Going back to look at Harpia, we've got the 16 taking all 120s. F-14's got two AIM-9s, sevens, and I'm going to assume uh, four Phoenixes. And then the 18s are rocking Trigger and Gunny's 18s are rocking six and two. Sorry, Trigger and Smokey. Six and two. But these guys are departing. Jet Sound's coming at you this Wednesday morning. Let's crank up the volume and watch these guys ingress. It's going to be a good one. Here we go.
All right. So again, this is Crimps taking on Guadada. Harpia against number 15 Battle Axes. Harpia, we just talked about this earlier, represented by Trigger, Smokey, Derby, and Mazzucato. And then on the number 15 side, we have Xbox, Gunny, Skinner, and who is the last one? I can't see you back there. And Beaver. Now, number 15 is all, and I mean all, F-16s. Harpia is two 18s, a singleton 16, and a 14. So that means that Harpia has standoff range and more weapons. Number 15 is going to have a total of 24 missiles. Harpia has... 30. So they've got six more weapons to utilize and longer sticks in those telephone poles carried by Mazzucato. It is weapon restriction A, so Mark 60s and 120 Charlies are in contention during today's matchup. Separation between these two teams is down to 50 miles. We are within range of the Mark 60 from Mazzucato, but it looks like he's holding on to him. Nobody's really high yet in this matchup. Harpia at 25 to 27,000 feet. Actually, Smokey's a bit lower, 23,000 feet. And then number 15 cruising at about 25. So number 15's a lot closer in altitude separation than Harpia, but Harpia, they're not too bad. I mean, they're separated by three or 4,000 feet. Number 15 separated by about 500 feet. So closer for number 15. Uh, number 15, pointing this out too, also has much higher speeds. I mean, look at Gunny and Beaver. Here's here's Gunny's aircraft. Gunny is at Mach 1.3 at 25,000 feet, and Beaver is doing really the same. Where is Beaver? Beaver, Beaver, Beaver. There's Beaver. So Beaver's doing the same thing. Both these guys ingressing very, very quickly. They're slowing down slightly from Mach 1.3 to Mach 1.25, but this is going to give their missiles the best shot that they can have releasing at these air speeds and decent altitude at impacting their target uh, on the first pass. I'd like to see them a bit higher, but they may be respecting that Mark 60. Maybe respecting Mazzucato's Tomcat. Mazzucato is climbing. He's at 30,000 feet now. Going back to TAC view so you guys can see what's up. And that is a little bit off. TAC view, why are you off? Why are you off? Fix that real quick, because that is going to bother me. We'll just make it bigger. There we go. Fixed. But these guys are now getting closer. Trigger leading the way first. Aim 54 off from Mazzucato. Let's grab that. So this is going to be a decent distance of a shot. But here's that Aim 54 from Mazzucato. Looks like it's tracking Beaver. Beaver is already defending. Beaver put a 120 out onto Smokey. That 120 is... 120 is right here, and it is on Smokey. And that AIM-54 is totally trashed, already down to 600 knots. The 120 shot by Beaver coming in onto Smokey doesn't look like it's doing too long. bad. You guys don't need to look at my face. Is it tracking? Looks like it's still tracking, but it's not going to have the energy to be able to maneuver in these last crucial moments here. Yep, that's going to miss him. So not bad shots. They got reactions out of everybody, but no kills during that first pass. Now the thing to watch is look how aggressive Trigger is being. So here's Trigger. He is being hugely aggressive coming in here, leading the way for Harpia. I don't know if number 15 expected this, but he pushed Gunny right on back and got within eight miles. Skinner pushes him off with the 120. Gets Trigger off of Gunny's back. Trigger wisely defends early and turns around and looks like he's recuperating and regrouping with Mazzucato. Derby and Smokey, meanwhile, up to the north are a little bit more patient. Xbox being pretty aggressive from the Harpiest side. Xbox gets a 120 off. And we can see the missile coming from Derby. On him, there goes the 120. That was launched from about 10 miles at 20,000 feet. 
Xbox, those flares aren't going to really do anything against the 120. Might as well save those. Uh, but he's... Actually, it wasn't a missile coming from Derby. That was just him coming through cons. So that missile inbound onto Derby is here, and it flies. It is Ninja Squirrel Fodder. And nothing really getting hugely close yet. Nothing being a big-time potential problem as of yet for either team. Everybody doing a great job of defending. Skinner now breaking away. Is he defending against anybody in particular? No. But look how aggressive Harpy is being. I mean, they are within 10 miles. Just Trigger is... He's out for blood. Beaver now recommitting. So Beaver's coming in here from the right, low, on the trigger. Is he going to be able to get the flank on? He's now head-to-head -head with Beaver, or with Trigger. 120 out from Beaver, on to Trigger. And here's that 120 inbound on to Trigger. Trigger defends early. And aggressively, and I think he's actually going to be able to drive this one into the ground. Yep, that's going to hit the ground right on the other side of that hill. Great job defending by Trigger. No issues here. I can't find any fault with anybody. Everybody defending very well. Everybody defending early. There's aggressiveness here. Nobody's really utilizing missiles in bad shooting situations. Everybody's launching from, let's say, under 10 miles. Got to love it. Got to love it a lot. But Triggers, I got to keep going back to him. He's continuing to be aggressive. He trashes that missile and then recommits immediately. Immediately. So here he comes. Now it looks like he's sorted onto Skinner. Zoom in on the, the tack view so you guys can get a bit better view of what's going on. So here's Trigger and Skinner coming in. Skinner is running away. Gunny coming in from the left. Can we see Gunny yet? Missile from Gunny. Gunny is a little bit above. There they are. There's the missile unleashed from Gunny. Is Trigger going to respect that? It's getting close. There's the missile warning, and Trigger's going to split us and get the hell out of Dodge. 120 already below Mach 2, so that shouldn't be a problem for Trigger to be able to get away from. But Skinner, meanwhile, looks like he's recommitting in his F-16. So these guys, as soon as they recognize that there's no longer a threat on them, they're recommitting back into the fight, which I love. They're not overextending. They're realizing at the very threshold that the missile is no longer a threat and turning back in and recommitting. Love it. Trigger now doing the same thing. I'm going to see if I can give you guys... I'm going to pause this real quick and see if I can set up a better camera angle because Skinner and Trigger just keep coming in on one another, and I want to make sure that we use the better cameras so that we don't miss anything. So split screen here. We have Skinner and Trigger coming in at each other. I'm gonna set the tack view up so you guys don't miss anything. But uh, here is Trigger, here is Skinner, and Skinner's actually gonna be in a pretty bad position because Mazzucato has launched an AIM-54 onto Skinner, and that's gonna give Trigger a pretty big opening in order to press because Skinner's gonna have to respect that Mark 60. Skinner is on the right side here. Skinner's gonna have to respect this Mark 60. He's trying to notch it. There is the one, the AIM-54. Oh, it hits him! He doesn't respect it. So, Mazzucato takes down Skinner and shows the power of that Mark 60. So, Skinner gets double teamed, egresses, and I guess he thought that he was defending that one, that AIM-54. Now, remember, something I do need to point out is there is that, um, the, uh, the desync bug that's going on with the AIM-54. So he may have thought he defeated it, but in reality, he didn't. Now, this is something that all teams have to contend with. I just want people to be be aware of that, you know, he may have seemed like he wasn't doing anything and was kind of flying dumbly, but there is a little bit of a desync bug. It's just what we have to deal with. I don't really want to change things this late in the game uh, with the finals looming right around the corner. But let's back up, take a look at the tack view, and see what happens. So here is Mazzucato in trigger, recommitting onto Skinner. Skinner is by himself. He's isolated by right around seven miles. That AIM-54 shot came from 15 miles. That is very, very dangerous. Very dangerous. 
In these situations where you're fighting ghost missiles, you need to make sure that you're just notching as well as you can, getting as slow as you can, and dumping as much chaff as possible. So Skinner just gets bamboozled, and that thing, that AIM-54, is still under power, virtually right off of power as it impacts Skinner's aircraft. Uh, Skinner, I guess, just thought he was in a notch, but was a bit maybe too fast, wasn't dumping enough countermeasures, and gets slammed by the incoming telephone pole, and that is the first casualty for the number 15 side, giving Harpia a one-pilot advantage coming in here into the mid-game during round one. All right, so we've got the three-ship remaining for number 15, Beaver, sorry, Beaver, Gunny, and Xbox. And then we still have the four-ship remaining for Harpia, Derby, Smokey, Mazzucato, and Trigger. Now, Beaver is the one that looks like he's in a little bit of a dilemma coming in against the two-ship of Trigger and Mazzucato. Uh, and then we've got a little bit more separation between the two number 15 guys and the Harpia combatants up here to the north. So... Let's change some cameras, and we will get going here. Here we go. One twenty now out from Xbox onto Smokey, and we've got a one twenty coming from Beaver onto. Looks like it's on Trigger. Trigger does a great job of line of sighting that. Great job by him. He gets away from that one. But Trigger, excuse me, Harpia looks like they're backing off a little bit and toning back the aggression, which I don't blame him. They got to kill off the aggression from Trigger, so well done there. Uh, I think it's a good time to reset and make sure you don't overpress any type of seeming advantage that you have and really get an advantage and commit when you've, you've got the landslide advantage coming in there. So 120 now coming in from, I don't know who that was from, I think it was on Beaver. That thing's not tracking anyone, comes in and make... Is become and becomes ninja squirrel fodder, hits into the trees. That is technology for North Korea. Xbox now coming in onto Trigger down here to the south. Trigger is defending Xbox. No, Trigger put a 120 off and then immediately defended, and Xbox is doing a similar thing. Both these guys are defending aggressively. Here's Xbox. Is he going to be able to get away from that 120? Where is it? Yes. They both line aside both of their incoming threats, and they're both going to get away with aircraft intact. But again, Harpia, an aircraft up. That's a significant advantage. Coming in here to the mid-game, moving into the late game now as missiles have been heavily expended. Not sure who has what remaining, but if we look at Smokey's aircraft, Smokey has... Virtually everything left. He's got six 120s, excuse me, five 120s, two AIM 7s, and two AIM 9s remaining. So he's got all the things. All the things left. Now Beaver launching onto Trigger. Excuse me. Onto Trigger. Trigger dragging the 120s in low. Looks like he's trying to out energy it, and he's going to do just that. Missiles down to Mach 1.15. It's going to get line of sighted for good measure. Trigger's been putting on a showcase of defensive maneuvering. Love it. Now we've got more of defined defensive lines and offensive lines being created. Harpy up here to the north of Bullseye. Meanwhile, number 15 down here to the south. Xbox leading the charge for number 15. Smokey and Trigger, meanwhile, leading the charge for Harpia. Smokey coming in, launching a 120 onto Xbox. Xbox launches and returns fire. Here's Xbox. We can see the 120 three miles away, two miles away. Does Xbox have the smash to be able to get away from that? Is he going to drive that in the ground? Yes, he vertically notches that. Great job. Smokey, meanwhile, defending the incoming missile from Xbox. 0.5 miles behind him, and it is going to fly into... Oh, it's getting close. It is getting very close. Look at that. It is right behind him. That smells exhaust fumes. And just wants to fly right up the tailpipe, runs out of energy at the last moment, and isn't able to find its way home into Smokey's aircraft. 
Aim 54 off for Mazzucato. That looks like it's on Xbox. Xbox is going to have to defend this one here in a moment. Is it on Xbox? No, it's on Gunny. So that one's not going to be a threat. Gunny, well, no. Gunny, Gunny line of sighted it, so good job there. Smokey now launching a 120 off onto Xbox. Xbox defending aggressively from that missile coming in onto himself from Smokey. He put a 120 on it, Smokey. That thing gets line of sight. No, it made it over the hill, but it doesn't have the juice to be able to pull up with him. Is Smokey going to have to do anything to defend the incoming threat onto him from Xbox? No, he gets away okay. So still a clinic of defensive maneuvering and line of sighting by both teams. Great job by both teams here. On both sides defending missiles, still three pilots remaining for Harpia and four pilots still remaining, or excuse me, four pilots for Harpia and three for number 15. Trigger now driving away from an incoming 120. These guys are just staying low in this hilly terrain, and it's wrecking havoc on these missiles. Wrecking havoc. Now we've got a 120 coming in onto Beaver. Here it is, and that's going to get line of sighted. Boom, into the hill. Smash, Ninja Squirrel fodder. Just continually line of sight, one after the other. Boom, boom, boom. Missiles into the trees. Is somebody going to get lucky and get caught with their pants down and get ramrodded and send us into the late game? Is it going to be number 15 going down to two? Or is it going to be Harpia getting taken down to the equalizer? Mazzucato now with another AIM-54 launch. That one looks like it's on, I can't tell who that's on, but here it is. It's coming in, looks like it's on Xbox. I think, but he's gonna line of sight it. Yes, phenomenal job. Oh, oh, is it picking back up? Woo, that got close. That got danger close. That can't, almost was coming right over the hill. And Xbox got lucky. Lucky. Let's see what Xbox has got going on. He's coming in head on against Smokey. Xbox now defending. Incoming 120. That was launched from decently close. Is it, it was launched from higher than him. There it is, one and a half miles away. You've got to get lower, Xbox. Don't go up. Oh, no. Xbox is going to be dead. Here it comes. One mile, half mile, point one miles, face mile. And Xbox, his controller disconnects, and he flies headlong into the trees. He is gone. Pause. Recap. What happened? We went from line of sighting to, Multher, I'm not going to line of sight. I'm going to pull up and be a brave soul and try and, I don't know, beat this missile at, as it, at its own game. He tried to pew-pew the missile out of the air, but I don't know if you guys know this. The missiles are better at pew-pew than your own aircraft. Man, that thing, as Stig just said, Tom Ago, barely, barely reached his aircraft. Let's back it up. So here's Xbox and Smokey. This engagement is from launches from eight miles. I have to say, guys, missiles in this one are being launched from great ranges. Highly effective PK shots. Great job by both teams utilizing weapons and giving their weapons the best chance at finding their intended target. Kudos to both teams. Great job. So Smokey launches a missile just under Mach 1 from about 14,000 feet, 13,000 feet. A little bit off kilter here, under 7 miles. All right? Dangerous shot, if not defended immediately. Xbox defends ag immediately, but doesn't defend aggressive enough. And I think Xbox is actually, his downfall here was how slow he was. And instead of trying to notch this, he tries to out-energy it and out Try out energy a missile, ladies and gentlemen, when you're already under Mach 1. That's a risky endeavor. He tries to do it, but doesn't pay off. The missile is just barely able to reach him. In my eyes, he needed to commit to the notch, stay in the notch, and try and make that happen. But the missile is able to find its intended target and just runs him down. Barely. It hits him at like Mach 1.2. So just as it was about to run out of energy, it hits hits Xbox's aircraft. 
if he would have pulled a aggressive defensive maneuver at the last moment, he may have been able to get that get away from that one. Jaster puts it perfectly. Ballistic suppository. That one went right up the pooper, unlubricated, and Xbox was removed from combat. Great shot by Smokey. Unfortunate choice of defensive maneuvering by Xbox, but, you know, he committed to trying to out-energy it. He just didn't do quite enough, and the missile found its mark. Meanwhile, down here to the south, Beaver was doing just the same thing, but he was able to line his sight that incoming 120. So we are down to two pilots remaining for number 15 and four still on the board for Harpia. Are they going to be able to make something happen? We are going to set this up and ride along with Gunny and Smokey and Beaver for the remainder of this matchup. All right, here we go. I can't fault number 15 for really anything they've done. They've done a great job on both sides. They've just gotten a little bit unlucky with defensive posturing and maneuvering here. Harpy has been just a tad bit more aggressive than number 15. And I think, if anything, that is the thing that is leading to the downfall of the number 15 side. What I've seen and gathered from matches that I've seen over the past several seasons is that, especially in 4v4, the team that is more aggressive in both lining up shots, getting to close ranges, and defensive maneuvering is almost always the team that comes out on top. Almost always. Let's zoom in here, though. We've got Gunny coming in head-on against Trigger. Gunny is here, launches a 120 in on Trigger. That is a close 120 being exchanged between him and Trigger. Is Trigger going to be able to get away from this one? We can see it out there from a distance. Does he? He line his sights it. Great. Trigger is just putting on a clinic. A pure clinic. One after the another. Trigger is dousing those missiles and sending them into the trees. That missile was launched from five miles. And he got away from it. But Mago says number 15 needs to get closer. That is true. That is true. Just a, a little bit closer. But they're not doing bad. Harpia, especially Trigger, is just doing a phenomenal job of defending those incoming missiles. Nothing can hit him. As Fiber says, soapy boy. Soapy, soapy boy. He is covered in suds and able to get away from virtually everything. And now Beaver and Gunny are on the run. And they got to be really careful because they're going to be coming up against the wall here soon. Trigger now coming in on a flank against Beaver and Gunny. Beaver and Gunny are 7 and 10 miles in front of him. He's in a pretty good flanking position. But the F-16s are going to have the energy advantage and are probably going to be able to outrun him. Does he have any long pokey sticks? He still has one 120 left of the pokey stick. And he's got two AIM-9s, the shorter kind of pokey stick. He's trying to get the, trying to get a intercept point. He's not flying straight at him. He's got his nose pointed way out in front of Beaver. I like that. He's flying smart. Flying smart, not in blower. Saving that fuel, recognizing that Gunny and Beaver are not threats to his aircraft. Slowly closing the distance. He's now six miles away from Beaver. Can see Beaver's dots, dot out there, 6.1 miles away. Gunny is going to be about double that as he's past Beaver about double the distance. And Trigger now climbing. I like that he's climbing. Very good. Nobody looks like they're really here to... Use up all of their fuel. Really like it. Trigger's still in a saunter. Not really a saunter. He's in gate. Or not gate. He's in buster, I should say. God, if I could talk. Five and a half miles now between Trigger and Beaver. Slowly closing the distance. Trigger's nose is still in front of Beaver's aircraft. But he's going to be behind Beaver here rather soon. And Beaver is slightly faster. So the rate of closure is going to be diminishing. And we are now out of range for that 120 in a tail chase. Gunny and Beaver actually may be just going straight home. They may be exiting the bubble here rather soon, and Beaver's in full blower. Mach 1.3, no way Trigger's going to be able to catch him now. 
No way he's going to be able to catch him now. And I think Trigger is recognizing that and getting ready to turn home. Because these guys are leaving the bubble. And Gunny now is Mach 1.3. So no way they're going to be able to... Anybody from Harpy is going to be able to catch them. 120 now out from Smokey. Sorry, it's an aim seven out from Smokey to try and make things happen. Sometimes when you launch on an adversary, you can get them to defend adversely against an incoming threat, but Beaver and Gunny are just sticking to their guns and carrying on. Mago, looks like that's what they're doing. They're saving lives because if you're tied with, it, with someone, kill count, your kill to death ratio is the tiebreaker. So saving lives isn't a bad thing to do. We've never seen anybody do it, but that is what, that's what it looks like number 15 is doing. So I can't fault him for it. And I think they have left the bubble, ladies and gentlemen. I think that is it. So let's fast forward here. So we're not wasting time on the egress. But Beaver and Gunny left the bubble seemingly in an effort to conserve lives or to conserve their kill-to-death ratio. Can't fault them. With as close as this division is, uh, Harpy and number 15 are virtually neck and neck. It makes a lot of sense. And as Mago has just gracefully pointed out, it would be very difficult for them in that situation to recommit into an already hot bandit. These guys indeed are now RTB as they have taken control of the bubble. Beaver and Gunny are putting down Aquadata. And that is going to be it. Let's catch up on some stuff. Uh, we got Monk who gifted a tier one sub. Not sure who that went, but thank you very much. Monk also gave 100 bits. And Japan gave 100 bits. Thank you very much, guys. That goes straight into making the stream better. This is not me trying to make money with these streams. It goes right back into DCS World events and for the community and making these things a more exciting and more fun time for the community to participate in. Mazzucato says, Harpy at number 15 to ECV were tied in points. Dang. Okay, so that makes that makes total sense from what Mazzucato says. says. Mazzucato is flying for Harpia, who's in this division. So total sense here. Uh, Rallis, I will play Harpia Ball at the end. How about we do that? Because I got to showcase the, the super cut. But let me grab this. Well, can I? Do you have a download link for that? Rallis, Rallis, can you send that to me if you got a download link? Just here in chat's fine. It makes it a lot easier. These guys are still RTB, and while they're RTB, and guys, I'm gonna set up the super cut because Alpha Whiskey sent it to me, so I'm gonna get that ready to go. Dumb song. That's ready. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. And these guys look like they are putting it down on finals. Trigger, who really led the way for his team in this round one, touches down back at Krimsk right after Derby. And then it's just Mazzucato to bring it in. But that's where we're going to end it. I'm going to send you guys to the Supercut. That means that Harpia is up one to nothing over number 15 going into round two. 
Number 15 has got to win round two in order to send us into that all-important round three. Will the lives they saved in this round one come back to be beneficial at some point during this season? I don't know. But let's check out the Supercut, and when we get back, round two will be here again. Round two, Harpia taking on number 15. These guys are getting ready to take off. Sides have been reversed. With Harpia now down at Guadada and number 15 up at Krimsk. Are we going to see a reverse of fortunes here? Smokey and Mazzucato landed together on round one. Sorry, I'm a failure. Relius, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I just continually fail at life. That's my job. That is the Moltar way. Failure. It's not an option. You know, everything you need to do is you need to do to the best ability to fail. Not succeed, fail. And that's how, that's how I live. That's why I live in my wife's basement. Chicken tendies. All day. That's all I do. She brings me chicken tendies. Anyway, these guys are getting ready to take off. Harpia is now rolling. Led off by Smokey. Let's crank up the volumes here again. Watch these guys ingress. Because what better way to get going on this hump day than jet sounds in the morning.
Is camera two muted? It shouldn't be. Let's find out. Uh, it does look to be that way, doesn't it? Hold on. We got a while for these guys to ingress. Let me see if I can figure out what exactly is going on with camera two. I can see it exporting. fixed one of the channels. There we go. You should be fixed now. Thank you for letting me know. That should be good to go now. But these guys are getting closer now. How far are we separated? Do we have time? No. 56 miles. We're right around the time where that Phoenix can be a thing. The Phoenix can be a thing. Are we going to see it be a factor? Is Mazzucato going to bring the telephone pole of doom to play here? Man, you guys are get really giving this to Harpy. 18,000 points against 1.2. Damn! A little bit one-sided there. Dang. Uh, camera work's getting better. I, I think if... If I learned one thing, managing four cameras made it very easy to manage two. I can flip back and forth. It just made it made it easy. Mazzucato, from what you guys are saying, definitely needs to be faster. He's at Mach 0.8, 30,000 feet. If he wants to use utilize a Phoenix from this range, he's got to be faster. But the question is, does he want to utilize a Phoenix at this range? So, if he doesn't, it doesn't really matter. So, maybe he's just trying to conserve fuel. We can just go that go that route. But I appreciate all of the kind words about the camera work. It used to suck. It's gotten better. Uh, it's gotten more fluent. I'm trying to get more and more with the music, but I'm just trying to give you guys good shots on the ingress during these these times. You think Mazzucato's smarter than that Navy doc? I think so too. I think if he shoots, he's gonna wait to inside 20 miles. Mazzucato is one of those Tomcat pilots that should be feared. He knows what he's doing. Him and his Rio, I don't know who his, who his Rio is, but they know when to shoot and when to hold him. So they're doing a great job. My question for this round is, Will they be as aggressive, and by they I mean Harpia, as they were doing during round one? And if they are that aggressive, will they be able to defend the incoming shots, alibi trigger, as well as they did in round one? Navy Doc says he will launch that Phoenix when the enemy can't escape. Well, I think that's when you want to launch all of your missiles. You know, that's when you want to, every shot you want to be that way. Looks like Mazzucato, though, is holding him. Beaver is the first one to launch now. First one to launch. That's coming from range. We're going to stick a can keep a camera on Mazzucato, and we are going to watch this AIM 120 as it comes in. So here's the 120, and that looks like it's on Trigger. Trigger wastes no time in getting away from that. So Trigger is coming in and is now going out. He is going away from that incoming threat. God, I love their liveries. Love their liveries. And that 120 is trashed. No factor. The Mazzucato's still holding them. Hasn't launched anything. He's under 30 miles now. Nothing has come off his aircraft. Just saw the missile detonate behind Trigger's plane that he was defending. 
Look at how aggressive up here Smokey is being. Gunny now defending an incoming close shot. Dropping those flares and countermeasures. Gunny. Flares don't do anything against a radar guided missile. He's dragging it though. Where is it? I don't see it yet. Somewhere back there. There it is. Under a mile away. Missile's down to Mach 1, and it's not going to be able to sustain this turn to find his aircraft. I love this serpentine out energy maneuvering being done by all of the combatants. It's doing a great job of minimizing threats and defeating incoming missiles. I think I just saw Mazzucato launch a missile. Did I? I think I did. Yeah, there it goes. So there goes a one, an AIM-54. Who is that on? That is on Xbox. I think we need to grab that missile. So here's the AIM-54 coming in onto Xbox, and it is trashed. Xbox did a great job of notching that. Missile is no longer tracking anybody. It's still at Mach 2.5, but it's off of boost, and it is no longer a threat to Xbox. Xbox's controller is still plugged in, and he is still in control. Trigger now, being the aggressive pilot he is, coming in against Gunny. Here is Trigger, leading the charge now for Harpia. Gunny has turned away. Is Trigger going to carry on with this aggressive flying, or is he going to turn away? Turn on the overlay so you guys can see what's going on in TAC view. 120 now coming from Smokey on to Beaver. That's got potential to do some harm. Here is Beaver. Defending that 120. Crossing with Gunny now. No threat. Missiles behind him. He's dragging it and it got line of sighted. Trigger was aggressive, but he thought better of being in this deep and this isolated. He is now turned away. Skinner puts a 120 on him. And here is Trigger dragging that 120. Skinner, that launch came from about 10 miles, maybe 9. Trigger climbing now. Love it. He's going up, forcing the missile to climb. Great job there. Missile is defeated. It didn't have the energy to pull with him up in that climb. He is now dragging Beaver and Xbox into Mazzucato. Meanwhile, Mazzucato is defending what I don't know but preemptively flying ahead of his airplane and defending a possible unseen threat turning away. Smokey, meanwhile, launching a 120 out here onto Skinner. Skinner is dragging that missile. Fix the this. Skinner's dragging that missile. He's at 2,000 feet. Missile coming down from 7,000 feet. There it is, two miles behind him, and it is not going to have the energy needed to be able to reach and touch him in the no-no spot. Continuation of great defensive flying by everyone involved. Is there ever going to be a deterioration? Pause, because I see something going on down here to the south. Beaver has gotten in deep against Smokey. Four miles away, launch. Actually, it's about five miles away from Smokey on to Beaver. All right, Beaver, are you going to be able to get away from this? We've actually got Xbox coming in. So I'm going to put Xbox on this other camera right here. All right, so we're with Beaver. He's got an incoming threat three miles away right there. Two and a half miles away, actually. Is he going to be able to get away from this one? Let's play and find out. Here we go. So we are playing. Missile is one and a half miles away. Is he going to be able to pull up? No. Great defensive maneuver by Beaver. And now let's flip over and take a look at Xbox, who just launched a missile. And that one is going on to Smokey and Derby to push them off of Be Beaver's tail end. Then we have Mazzucato coming in from the south trying to make something happen. He launches an AIM-54 from the south. There it goes. Stay in constant altitude, not climbing. That's going to be on the three-ship Xbox Gunner in Gunny and Beaver. Not sure which one it's on yet. And Mazzucato has a 120 on him. So we're going to stick with him while I get the AIM-54 set up. Here's the AIM-54, still under boost. Mazzucato gets away from that 120. AIM-54 looks like it's on Beaver. Beaver trying to go into the notch. Is he going to be able to light his sight this? It is closing rapidly. 1,600 knots. Beaver 
Are you going to be able to get back to your dam? I don't know. It's going to be close. Still chasing him. It's right behind him. And Beaver doing, is it going to be? It's so close. It's so close. Oh my God. So close. And Beaver just barely out energies that missile and gets away by the skin of his teeth. I want to know. I want to know how close the pilots think these missiles are when they're defending them. Sorry, I may have scared some of you. But damn. Damn, that thing got close. So close. He did a great job, though. I got to give him credit for that. Did a great job. I'm going to play it now that we're, we're back. Did a great job of committing to a specific type of defensive maneuvering and just went for it. He out energy it, stayed with it, and was able to get away from it. Now we've got Smokey, Dragon 120, and he drives that one into the ground. So one thing that I'm noticing here is there's not a big commitment into getting the, the, uh, the altitude back. They are staying low, but defending in a way that makes being low advantageous. Silver Phoenix, I post that picture. I want to see that. Still have four pilots remaining for both teams. Skinner, though, is getting pulled out by that 120. He didn't need to defend for that long. This 120 is coming in on to, looks like it's on Xbox. I think. No, it's not actually tracking anybody. And now we've got Trigger, who needs to, again, defend an incoming threat. So Trigger needs to defend. He's dragging this one down into thicker air. Missile is right behind him. That one's going to be ninja squirrel fodder or yak fodder as it plows into the ground, the snow-covered field. And now we've got a bit of breathing room. Ten miles or so separating these two teams, adversary for adversary. Gunny now leading the charge for number 15. He thinks better of it and re regroups and comes back with the rest of his team. Another aim 54 coming off from Mazzucato. On to, I'm going to guess that's on Gunny, but he can afford to launch from 20 some miles. I mean, the, the Mark 40 or Mark 60, excuse me, burns for something like 60 seconds. And now we need to, I think, take a look at Derby. Derby's got this incoming 120. Where is it? Where is it? It's somewhere. It just barely missed him. Pause. Ooh. And I think we actually need to take a look. Gunny was just barely able to get away from this AIM-54. Where is it? Did it just come off boost? Just flies over him, so he was able to notch it. Was able to notch that thing and get away from it. Great job by him. And then Derby, meanwhile, we just saw was able to get away from his incoming threat. So AIM-54, not a factor. I just heard another missile launch. Comes off of Xbox. Xbox. See the missile climbing away from him. Is that on trigger? Looks like it's on trigger. So that missile is going to be dragged by trigger. Trigger now defending. And he just keeps sending these into the ground. This oblique maneuver that he's doing and pulling up at the last second. He's nigh unhittable. Nobody can reach out and touch him. Doing a great job. Guy knows how to defend. Still four pilots remaining for both sides. Little bit of regroup action coming now. Skinner leading the way for number 15. I feel like it's always the same guys leading the way for the teams, but you know, the guys that are aggressive are the guys that will continue to be aggressive, and a lot of times they're the guys that will get things done. Trigger sends another one into the dirt. Things just can't track him. Just not able to stay with him. The man is a ghost. Now Smokey needs to make something happen. He's got a 120 coming for his behind two miles away. That's not going to be able to get him, though. He is over Mach 1, missiles one mile away, down to one and a half Mach. He's going to be A-OK. -okay. But Beaver continually seems to get himself into a position where he's isolated. 
I'm worried about him. He's by himself. Coming head on against Derby. But I like that he's not waiting to shoot. That's a seven mile shot against a bandit at 17,000 feet. And Derby needs to defend and he needs to defend aggressively. Here comes the 120, one mile away. And they just keep doing this maneuver where the missile just can't pull with them out of this split S. It's got the energy to keep going and to catch them. It just doesn't have the energy to be able to pull with them through that split S maneuver. So Derby able to do the same same thing Trigger was doing, the Trigger maneuver. And Beaver is now regrouped. Trigger now coming back in. Lots of missiles still remaining on his aircraft. At least three 120s. Xbox sends 120 Trigger's way. That thing, I think, is going to meet the same fate as so many before it and go straight into the town, maybe take out an innocent townsfolk, and there it goes. It is no longer for this world. Meanwhile, up north, smoky, isolated, getting in a bit deep. Dragging multiple 120s from the entire team of number 15. Closest threat is, uh, where is it? It's somewhere there. Oh, my God. It just came straight over the hill, 0.1 miles. It's right behind him and just doesn't have the juice to be able to grab it. It was hard to see over the trees, but that thing got danger close. Let's pause it and take a look at the overall situation here. All right, overall situation. Lines are starting to deteriorate. Lines are starting to bleed together. Xbox coming down here against Mazzucato unleashes one. Aim seven for Mazzucato. Immediately unsupported. Be Beaver being aggressive, coming in against on Smokey. I think he was the one that launched that missile on Smokey. Derby responds with a 120 of his own. I need to get some cameras set up. Let's see. 120 from Derby. Here we go. There we don't go. Pause, damn it. All right, I need to resync cameras because they got a little bit out of sync. So hold on. There we go. Sorry, guys. Banes of running multiple cameras. There we go. All right, we're all synced up. So we're going to hit play now and see how this goes. We're riding along with the missile fired from Derby on to Beaver. And it doesn't look like actually it's tracking anybody. So there we go. Everybody's over Mach 1. It is tracking somebody. Is it going to be able to find its home? No. It's being outrun in a considerable way. And the lines have been reset. Everybody from number 15 is getting the hell out of Dodge. And Harpia is re-picking back up the aggressive mindset. Trigger recommitting, looking like he wants to make something happen. 120 off from his jet. Looks like that's on to Skinner. Skinner immediately defends. Is the missile going to be able to find him? No, it's going to find a tree. And there is the tree that it finds. So missiles just not able to find their intended target. And now we've got a head-on incursion coming between Mazzucato and Beaver. And we're getting into dangerous territory for the AIM-54. And Mazzucato has one left. Does it have Beaver's name on it? 120 out from Beaver. We're under seven miles. 120 actually looks like it's on trigger. Mazzucato gets a free pass in here. Does he see Beaver split screen? Beaver on the right. Mazzucato on the left. Mazzucato puts an aim seven out instead. Of the aim 54. And these guys are merged. These guys are merged right over top one another. They don't know each other's there. Trigger is now recommitting back in. I think he knows where Beaver is thanks to the data link that he's got inside that F-18. Beaver is six miles ahead of him. And these lines are starting to get continually get blurred here. 
Beaver now recommitting. This is not a good place to recommit if you're Beaver. You don't want to recommit into a beta. It's already hot. And that is a 120. That's no. 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 Did it hit somebody? Did we miss? Beaver's still alive. Did Xbox get hit? Nobody got hit. Okay. I thought we were going to miss something there. So triggers turned away. All right. Sorry, guys. Just wanted to make sure we didn't miss anything. Trigger's pulled away, and he's dragging Beaver. Meanwhile, Mazzucato is recommitting. So let's watch him recommit. We've got him getting ready to overfly Trigger. Is Beaver going to be tunnel visioned onto, onto Trigger? Does he know Mazzucato, the angel of death, is ingressing on him? Does Mazzucato see him? Yes. He's just committed onto him. There goes the aim 54 on to Beaver. Beaver is going to have a very difficult time outrunning that incoming aim 54. Are we not synced up? Hold on, guys. All right. This has got to fast forward because these cameras are out of sync. I'm sorry. go that one's synced up now and this one oh this one was at half speed that's why it was slow okay now we're going i apologize guys sometimes my hands can't move fast enough here it goes so here's the aim 54 coming in on beaver and i don't see him there he is he's down low is it gonna track him still under power Two miles away. It looks like it's tracking him. Could be desynced. And there it is! And it finds its home. Mazzucato gets a kill with the last missile that he's got, or the last AIM-54 he's got in his aircraft. And it finds its mark. And Beaver just gets railroaded. Missile says, I want to go home and does just that. Let's jump to TAC view and see what happened there. All right, so backing up, Beaver got in a little, he got a little ambitious coming in against Trigger. Aim 54 came down from about 10,000 feet and just plows into the rear end of Beaver's aircraft. Maybe he didn't have a missile warning, I don't know, but he didn't really react in any way, shape, or form and gets taken out. He is the first casualty of the number 15 side. Now they've got this bubble of aircraft up here to the north, but... Um, Actually, we missed somebody. Derby got taken down by Xbox at the same time. So Derby got taken down by Xbox. We missed that. So it's actually a 3v3. And that just came down to Derby not shooting, getting caught a bit too high, and not having a way out of that one, and he gets taken down. So we're down to a 3v3. With three pilots for number 15 remaining and three for Harpia. Let's get everything back on track. Here we go. All right. Skinner now coming in head on against Smokey. Smokey going to be able to make something happen? Doesn't look like it. He breaks away. Doesn't even want to play in that game. Four miles away. He's already cold. Should be able to get away from that 120. But he's going to line of sight it without a problem just for good measure. Meanwhile, down to the south, Trigger is dragging Gunny. Mazzucato, though, doesn't have a lot of weapons left. He's out of aim 54s. He's got only two AIM-9s, so he's limited in his capacity. He's actually got a 120 coming in on him. Where is it? Point two miles, and Mazzucati, Mazzucati, Mazzucato gets smashed by Gunny. Gunny showing that Gunny is the man on the range and takes down Mazzucato with the 120 seemingly out of nowhere. I didn't see that one coming, but he gets taken down. 
Let's back up here. Mazzucato, I guess, didn't see Gunny come out of the weeds, but Gunny saw him, and Mazzucato doesn't defend until late, gets his wings clipped, and becomes ninja squirrel fodder. He is gone. And now we have three pilots remaining for number fifth. Excuse me, yeah, for number fifteen and two for Harpia. So Smokey and Trigger are the ones remaining for Harpia, and Gunny, Xbox, and Skinner are the ones remaining on the table for number fifteen. Here we go. So Trigger now leading the way, the charge against the three ship. But look how isolated Skinner is up here. Maybe he's out of fuel. Trigger now coming in against Gunny and Xbox. Trigger launches a 120. Flares immediately. That's coming in on to... Onto Gunny, and Gunny gets smoked. So Trigger immediately equalizes the playing field, smokes Gunny. Gunny thought he was the boss of the range, and Trigger's like, my Trigger discipline's better than yours, bro, and takes him down. So now it's Skinner and Xbox left for number 15, and then Trigger and Smokey remaining for Harpia. But I got to say, it actually looks like number 15 is turning tail and running trying to save their kill to death ratio. So here's Smokey. Bring up Trigger here in just a second. We'll do Xbox. So here's Xbox flying low. And these guys look like they're just running running tail, turning tail and running. So you've got Trigger on camera three. Excuse me, those are wrong. Trigger's on camera two. Xbox is on camera three. And Smokey's on camera one. They still have a chance, but I think they're, they're more worried about their kill to death ratio and just wanting to make sure that they have a chance for a high seed going into the end of the year tournament. So that's my my guess here at least. So they do look like they are running away as Bullseye is way back here and they are right up against the bubble wall. So we're gonna fast forward, just so we're not wasting anybody's time. Turn the volumes down so we're not listening to the fast forward sounds. And that is that's exactly what's happening guys. They are running, saving their kill-to-death ratio, maybe hoping that they drag Harpia out of the bubble. I don't know. Maybe they're hoping that Harpia runs out of fuel on their RTB, but now Smokey looks like he's getting ready to turn around. Um, actually, Xbox thought about it, but Smokey put a 120 on him, and that's that's not going to reach him. So Xbox is just going to out-energy that, and they're going to they're gonna turn tail in RTB. But that's going to bring us to the end, ladies and gentlemen, because I don't think they're going to have any problem with making it back to Guadada. They're already at high altitude. Smokey's at 30,000 feet. Trigger's at 30,000 feet. These guys are going to be able to make it back without an issue. Oh, oh, come on. Is that me not wanting because I don't want to stream the RTB or because they're not fighting? I mean, it's, it's sad they don't want to fight, but it makes sense if they're trying to make sure that they don't go down. I mean, Trigger has been nigh unstoppable during this. Is that a draw? No. Harpia is going to control the bubble. They're still in the bubble. Um, and if they control the bubble, they're, they win. No problem. They're going to they're gonna control it without any issue because uh, number 15 is out of the bubble. So Harpia controls it. For anybody that doesn't know, um, Harp, if you control the bubble for five minutes, you win as long as you're able to RTB. So Harpia does just that. And they RTB, so they win the round. Or they seem to be able to RTB here without, without really any issues. 
And Xbox is putting down da up at Krimsk. Trigger and Smokey are headed back to Guadada. I'm going to fast forward this a little bit more. Ten times should do it. Turn that down. And that's just, it's an, this is an unusual turn of events. But. No, there's no but. It's just interesting. I've never seen a team do this before. So, interesting. Interesting play here. I can't fault them for it. It makes sense. But. We just haven't seen this before in Saytel. I got to give them credit for coming up with something new and saving their lives. Great job by them. So Harpy is going to be able to make it back without too much of a, an issue. Trigger and Smokey putting it down at Guadada. And that's going to bring us to the end, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to slow down camera one. That's going to bring us to the end of yet another day of Saytel. Next stream is going to be Saturday, 1600 Zulus. We're going back to the Monday, Wednesday, Saturday schedule. I'm not sure who's flying. That is going to be up to my man, Alpha Whiskey. He looks at him and does the super cuts. We're going to be, I'm going to be waiting for him to tell me who I am casting. But uh, we are going to be flying back in the air, 1600 Zulu, this Saturday for the next match. I would imagine it's probably going to be Gold League because we are getting caught back up with the real-time stuff. So I will see you guys Saturday. Stay safe in those virtual skies. Have a good one, and I'll see you guys later.